So when we read in the New Testament, many Christians find themselves faced with the question of the Jews. What part do the Jews have in God's plan? And this is especially when we stick with only the New Testament and don't bring the whole Bible into our reading. And when we look at what part the Jews happen to have in God's plan, and many times we'll find ourselves looking at Matthew chapter 23 and verses 37 and 38. And when we look at them and are presented with those verses, we might not give them a great deal of thought. In fact, when we look at them, we might look at the Jews and consider that theirs is a hopeless cause. Because it, for all intents and purposes, that's exactly how it appears to be. And the principal reason why we figure, and why we might suppose that the Jews are a hopeless cause in God's plan, is simply this, that the Jews killed the Lord Jesus Christ. And for many people, that right there is sufficient to suppose that the Jews are a hopeless cause in God's plan. And when we read Matthew 23, verses 37 and 38, it only reinforces the idea. Now what those verses say is this. Jesus is speaking and he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were unwilling. Behold, your house is being left to you desolate. And we think that's a full stop right there. It sounds like a definitive thought. And it highlights several points that we see in many parts of Scripture. The Jews persecuted God's prophets time and time and time again, and so many prophets were killed. It speaks about their disobedience as a people, as a whole nation. They have been disobedient throughout their entire history, never seeming to have any real regard for God's will and purpose. And so those verses are telling us then that the house, the house of the Jews, is going to be left desolate. And then we just look at history. So if, if the verses in the Bible are just not enough, history itself seems to bear this out. Between 1942 and 1945, we remember the Holocaust and we consider, and we might think that that's a judgment of the Jews, their house being left desolate. We might look at the current Arab and Israel conflicts that are happening, constant battles going back and forth, never really a, a peaceful moment for the Israelites, always being faced with some foe somewhere. Even closer to home, we might consider that in 2006, in the Seattle Jewish Federation building, there was a shooting. Somebody went in and killed people as a judgment of God against the Jews, their house being left to them desolate. And at this time, a man walked into a Jewish synagogue in Pittsburgh and killed several people. Again, we might look at that and figure that there is the proof, the house of the Jews being left to them desolate. But if we read just one verse further, what we find is that the hopeless cause is actually a hopeful one. Because if we go just one verse further, this is what we read. We'll start at the beginning at verse 37. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together, the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were unwilling. Behold, your house is being left to you desolate. But it goes on. For I say unto you, from now on you will not see me until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, interestingly enough, is that Jesus says this at a point when only really just a little bit earlier in Matthew, Jesus has entered Jerusalem and those very words are spoken. The people, the Jews, came and said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But Jesus says now at this point, you will not see me until you say it again. The first time was just a foreshadow. It was just a little piece. But Jesus said that the first time you said it, it wasn't the real thing. There's another time that you are going to say it. Now what's really interesting about this verse is that Jesus is not simply quoting what the Jews said earlier in Matthew. He's actually quoting a psalm. He's actually going back to the Old Testament and quoting from Psalm 118, verses 25 and 26. 
Now, in that psalm, when we read those verses, we read, O Lord, do save, we beseech you. O Lord, we beseech you, do send prosperity. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Now we have to ask ourselves, Jesus is telling us that those Jews, those Jews, that Jerusalem who kills the prophets and persecutes the prophets, they are the ones who are going to say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now is that the same as the we in Psalm 118, verse 26? We have blessed you from the house of the Lord? How is that going to happen? What is being said? Who are the we of Psalm 118? Now hopefully, by this point, you've actually looked it up in your Bible because we just have to look at verse 1. We start right from the very beginning. And we start from the beginning and we see just how hopeful the cause of the Jews as a people are. Psalm 118, verse 1 reads, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Oh, let Israel say, his loving kindness is everlasting. Oh, let the house of Aaron say, his loving kindness is everlasting. Oh, let those who fear the Lord say, his loving kindness is everlasting. And those groups of people are the ones that later on go to say, Lord, we beseech you, send prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It's Israel. It's Aaron. And it's those who fear the Lord. And what, what a wonderful addition to these verses, to the, the message that Jesus was giving the Jews, saying that you are not going to see me until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, because it's not going to be you alone who says it. It's going to include those who fear the Lord. And that's what we desire to be. As Christians, as followers of Christ, we desire to be those who fear the Lord. And it's not without the Jews, it's with them. The message of Matthew 23 is not that the Jews were going to fall, that their house was going to be left desolate forever, but they, they were going to fall and they were going to rise again. And that's how the Apostle Paul summarizes this whole subject in Romans chapter 11, verses 25 to 27. He says, For I do not want you, brethren, to be uninformed of this mystery, so that you will not be wise in your own estimation that a partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved. Just as it is written, the Deliverer will come from Zion. He will remove ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. And so the Psalms, Romans, and the message of Jesus himself tells us that that hardening of the heart, that time of the Jews' house being left desolate, was only to be for time, only to be partial, until all those who fear the Lord should come to the Lord, should come to be saved. And then, as it is says, all Israel at that time will be saved, and ungodliness will be removed, and Jesus will be king over all the earth.